what do you think you've done or your wife has done or both of you have done that makes your marriage work? Like how long have you been married first? Why do you think your marriage could sustain the pressures of an extended campaign and then a potential presidency? Because that's a hell of a lot to ask for any for any bond to maintain that many transformations. Why do you, what have you guys done that should, let's say, speak to a certain degree of confidence among the listeners in the integrity of the commitments that you've made on the family front? Mm. Well, I would say that the, the, the superficial answer is we just got very lucky. The deeper answer is I think we chose well. The true answer is I think that we were actually, we were set up by fate, I think by God, to be in this marriage with one another. I mean, there are, I've never met and will never meet somebody in my life who pushes me. And I think that that's, it's the push actually between us, right? It was, you know, I think that Apoorva, she pushes me to be the best version of myself. The, the, the only person more unforgiving of my failure to be the best version of myself than me I'm I'm very unforgiving of myself, but there's one person even more unforgiving and unsparing, and that's Apoorva. And I and I return the favor to her. And I think that that is that push. It's how do you do that without alienating tension. each other? How well, do you do that I, without alienating each other? I think it is. Well, the, you know, occasionally there will be spikes of it in moments of insecurity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But but the the, the lack of alienation doesn't actually come from the without. That comes from within. <laughs> right. So, so so when you have somebody who loves you and is pushing you to be the best version of yourself because they know that they can expect more of you and then you lash out at them as I on occasion may in my weaker moments do, that is actually an insecurity in me. And I think that my ability to at least see that is part of what and she helps me see it, right? Understands enough of me to understand what those moments of insecurity are to just say, okay, he didn't mean what he just said, but we're going to actually get to the bottom of this. I, that's actually been for us a um, very different way that might not be working for everybody else. It's not just like two magnets that are automatically stuck. That's the, been the result of it. It's actually two people who are in a constant cooperative struggle in pushing one another to be the best version of ourselves. And I think it, that's the way I would describe it. Is I think actually that cooperative tension is part of what actually keeps our marriage and our family unit so like, deeply, steel level strong. And I think that that is- I think Ben Shapiro- I think by Ben fate. Shapiro- I don't think we would have found it. Shapiro told me that the Hebrew word for Eve means beneficial adversary, and it means optimized player. It means something like optimized player in a challenging yes. game, right? So that's there what, is that's, that. That's the best description of it. That's the that, that's exactly yeah. how it feels. You you caught me in trying to me try to describe it. I have a feeling it's hard to capture in words. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You just captured it in words. <laughs> that is it, and and it just it just actually raises another one of these kind of conservative values that's a little bit um, uncouth maybe to talk about or you're not supposed to, it's beyond the pale to talk about right now, but it's just the importance of choosing who you marry and choosing very well and almost the responsibility that I'm grateful that my parents, Apurva's parents, both exercised in in making sure that they were, you know, filtering for making sure, understanding their kid probably better than anybody else. That's something that I think many parents abdicate today is to say that, oh, he's, well, I think he would find somebody more matched for him, but at least he's happy or at least she's happy. And, and you're studying Exodus, but I, I, this might be, this might be more of a Genesis example. I think it's probably late in the book of Genesis when, when Abraham sends his servant after he has his, has him put his hand under his thigh for the moment of commitment. That was just how they, they made commitments back then. We don't put people's hands under their thighs now, but that was, I think, the biblical version of a, a, a solid commitment to say, go back all the way over there to our homeland to find 
the proper spouse for my son Isaac, who was he was the son that he was God asked him to sacrifice. He didn't have to sacrifice. It was important to him to know that he went all the way there. And what if I come back empty-handed? He said, I will not come, you will not come back empty-handed. If you do, I will relieve you of your promise. But do not come back empty-handed. And I do not want her mar- I don't want her marrying someone, you know, a Canaanite or something like this. So you know, he brings back Rebecca. And I think it's just a beautiful story of the importance of parental, some, it doesn't always have to be this way, but the spirit of it at least is, if it's not a parent, it's someone close to you. Maybe it's a best friend, but who really cares enough about you to say that maybe that's not the right person. And and what I will tell you is in the period that Apoorva and I were dating, um, pragmatically, we knew we were going to get married, but we were waiting for her to finish medical school and by the pragmatism of, you know, all of that. If I was to do it again, we would have just gotten married sooner and just be done with it. We don't have to have a big ceremony about it. But we we started in 2011. We got married in 2015. There wasn't one person who cared about either of us who would have looked and said, you know, maybe you want to take a step back and take it a little bit slower. But if the people around me who know me best, they would have stepped up, including and up to it, including my parents and family members and my brother and you know, my best friends, they would have stepped up and said, hey, this isn't, this isn't right. Why don't you, or, or, you know, are you sure you want to go this fast? Take it slow. Not a single person around me said it because they knew it was right. But I think it also just highlights the importance of, we could say we got lucky, but I think that actually it was the fabric around us, each of us that helped us get it right too. And so I think mm-hmm. even the importance of who you choose in your marriage, I mean, the Bible has a lot to say about this. Hindu tradition has a lot to say about this. My parents have a lot to say about this. And if you asked me 20 years ago, I would never be saying this right now, but I think that actually there is a role for family members to play. In That's a wise role for wise counsel. Privilege. It is, yeah, mm-hmm. and I enjoyed that. And I and I thankfully, I'm, I'm, I'm eternally grateful that I was blessed with the wife that I have now that was not a product of accident 